Alright, welcome to part four of the kitchen tutorial. So we'll carry on here. Uh, sorry for the noise in the background. It's kind of hot outside, so my air conditioner's on. Uh, hopefully it's not too annoying. Uh, but we'll see. So, let's work on... What do we want to work on? I guess we can do this whole little thingamabob. So let's actually delete this for now. And then get one of these, go to element, and shift drag this over, and then clone to object. And I'm just trying to get a gauge of how big <coughs> this thing actually is. And again, make sure to save. So save often as much as you humanly can. So that's about good. This thing is going to make this a little bit longer, so right about there, I'd say. So that's the top cabinet, now select the actual cabinet itself, and let's see, what do we want to do here? We need to basically add the cabinet in, so go to Polygon, and let actually, actually let's use one of these. So, because I don't want a hole cut in mine. So, select. Um, hmm. Okay, let's not do that. Let's use one of these, and we'll fix the hole. So, select this, and shift drag over here, just somewhere. Let's see what we can do here. So, we're missing a side. So, let's select this polygon, grow, and delete all that. Okay. Next, let's create a side here. So, go to create. Um, let's try this again. This might be difficult. Let's actually create this front one first. So, create, select. Um, I think it's. Nope, that was not it. Okay, it's going to be a pain. So, we know we want to connect to this bottom thing, but let's try again. Connect. Connect, connect, and let's see if we did it. That one's good. That one's good. Alright, we did it. So, go up here and cap that. Control, select it, and never mind, we didn't. Wait, maybe we did. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, then chamfer, and let's do point 0.1 for 3. Alrighty, there we go, now we have a uh, nice little thing, so move it back into place on the top. Food only centered object. Now let's move it into place. Get it close and then select these and shift them into place. And lastly, let's extend this out to about there. Next, let's bring this just down, and this will go, so this should be sunk in, and it is, good. <clears throat> this is somehow floating, let's 
go to the front viewport here, just line it up with the rest of the floating things. And it turns out that we're going to need to use one of these anyway. Wonderful. Uh, let's use this it's a polygon, select, shift drag. Okay. And then let's delete this. The reason we're doing this is because I figured out this actually has a base on it, or one of those little, the indent of the floor, this little thing. So let's go in here and get it kind of close. Right there is probably good. Press 1 and extend this side out. <clears throat> all right, next select all of this and raise it up front and level it off. All right, there we go. That looks about the appropriate size, I'd say. Um, aside from the fact that it's a bit too long, so select these things, go on the top. We're matching the top up with the other ones, so. this. Alright, there we go. And let's see. This should be about two of these wide, so let's effect pivot only, centered object. Press E, and then rotate 90 degrees by using shift. And let's just see, is that about two? Alright, so that's about perfect. So, Let's, um, well, we can use this, I guess. No reason why we can't. So press 1 and bring it to the top. Or line it up as close as you can get it. And then line this one up with the other edge. Bring this down to the bottom. Okay. And just try to center this up. Now, it won't be exact, but it'll be pretty close, so copy. And let's decrease the gap here. Okay, so select both of these, center it up a bit, press R, and scale it outwards ever so slightly. W, maybe move it a bit, okay, a bit more, and then a bit more scaling, so let's actually go here. Do 99. Oops, not that. Um, okay, it's not going to quite work like that. So let's just select each individual one and we'll finish it off by hand. So press W, make sure you're moving on this axis. Go in here and manually do it. Okay, come to the other one. Go here. Make sure you're on the right axis and manually adjust. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's see here. That'll be fine. That deals with all the cabinets. Now these have a slight door kind of looking thing on them. And we're just going to Let's see, we're going to use these again. Okay. Rotate 90. And these are basically a countertop level. So, from here, and then copy them over. 
Alright, there we go. So, that finishes those. And actually, well, we should make sure they're actually on the right plane, shouldn't we? So go in the left hand viewport here. And sink them right in there. There we go. Now they're good to go. Okay, so next, let's um, start work on. So we can take a breather from the cabinets for a while and work on this uh, hood. So let's see. You can see it here. So basically, the shape we have is exactly what we need. <clears throat> we just have to give it some thickness and whatnot. So, let's uh, delete this polygon here to begin with. And I guess the shape is actually good. I don't know what else we can do with it. Um, what we can do, though, is... Let's see. Well, let's give it a shell modifier. Okay, and outer thickness of zero, inner thickness is what we want. All right, and we'll give it a thickness of probably half a centimeter is good. Uh, that looks about right. Okay, convert that to an editable poly. Go into the front view here and let's just adjust the size of this. Like so. Alright. And actually undo all that. So now with the editable poly selected, select all the lines and then deselect a few of them. Um, let's see here. Don't need any of these. Or these ones. We're going to give it the chamfers right now, so it, it'll look good. Um, let's see, I think that should be them all. So, chamfer. Point one and three. That should be everything. Okay. Now let's try giving it the shell modifier. With uh, inner amount of 0.5, outer amount of 0. Okay. Now convert. And now we're getting somewhere. Actually, for this one, let's actually apply a, uh, we'll see how it works. I kind of want to apply a turbo smooth, but let's, um, wait a second here. This didn't chamfer three times, did it? So go back for the shell. So go back to all the lines. Chamfer. Point one, three times. There we go. Now add a shell. And then point five and zero. Poly again. Now, if we add a mesh smooth, let's see how it looks, or a turbo smooth, I guess. Okay, well, the outside looks nice, but the inside has some major problems. Where they come from, I do not know. Let's take a look. In the end, it might not be worth the effort because there's all sorts of issues here. Um, let's look 
the shell. Uh, so she, so the shell thickness is what's calling, causing it. So if we go out, I think we'll be good. So let's just um, do an outer shell of 0.5. Uh, actually, maybe point, point 0.3 seems good. Now, if we apply turbo smooth, the same thing happens. Okay, so let's just not apply turbo smooth. That was the point of chamfers anyway. Okay, so we have our main stove thing. Next, let's go into it. And we're going to, oops, sorry, um, create some type of mesh in here. So select one of these, hit ring, connect, and then let's just slide it up a bit. Okay. Now click this one, and grow, 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 shrink, get rid of all these, all these, and those, extrude, oop, and that one. And those ones. And all these other were random ones that are selected somehow. Okay, so now let's just extrude them forward. So this is basically creating something where you can have a, I don't know, something going through it basically. So select OK. And then just move them back until you can't see them anymore. Now usually these things are kind of like angled, so we're going to angle ours just a bit. And actually let's go to isolate selection, make this easier on herself. Okay. And what do we have? Just to save us some trouble in the long run, we're going to select these, go to the front viewport, and scale them in just a little bit. Alright, actually we don't have to scale them in, just select them, and then move them just to the inside, just so they're not sticking out. Alright, there we go, now we have that part of the hood created. So, unless we're going underneath there, we shouldn't have any troubles. So, that looks pretty good. Let's just quickly render it for a second. Alright, good. I was just looking to see if that thing bled through at all, and it doesn't. So, exit isolation mode. And our hood's done. Let's give it just a different color. Maybe a red. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's see next. We can work on uh, these cabinet looking things. So I'm going to say, let's select, let's select these polygons and detach somewhere. Detach, okay. Select it. Select the edge that's not capped and cap it. Control A, chamfer, uh, point 0.1 with 3. So I don't know why I can't use the number pad there. Oops. Okay, point 0.1 with 3 looks pretty good. Select OK. And of course it didn't actually do anything. So let's try it again. There we go, now we got it. And so I'm guessing that there is, like I said before, some type of lighting under here. So let's inset this ever so slightly. Inset about, I don't know, 0.75 centimeters. 
Okay, and then extrude up about. Okay, hold on a second here. I don't think we inset it. Inset. Okay, inset. Now extrude. Alright, there we go. So inset it about maybe 10 centimeters up. Looks like it was room for lights and things. Okay, so that's good. Um, next, select this polygon here and grow. Control click, chamfer. And you can select these edges too, just so our chamfer isn't odd looking. Alright, there we go. So that cabinet is done. And then for now, just because we can, uh, let's build a teapot and another teapot. This is just to remind us that there are things up here. Okay. Um, let's see, what do we want to do now? So we finished the stove hood, we finished this part. I guess we can work on this next. So it's basically three pieces. There's one, two, and then three. And it's very similar to this piece over here. So we're going to take this, press W, and just shift drag it. Okay. Press E, rotate 90 degrees. And let's delete this one. So take it and okay. Um, try, okay, so yeah, we have a problem here. Just noticed it, so click this, cap, click that, chamfer, point 0.1 for 3. There we go. That didn't actually have a side on it, but now it does, so we're good. <clears throat> and let's do the same for this one. Um, so, cap, click, chamfer, So select both these now, go in the top viewport, and then press W, and just position them. So right about here is looking pretty good. Okay. Um, and then these things are going to be... Let's see. I think it's got to be moved out a bit. Uh, either that or these are shorter. Okay, now yeah, this is going to have to be moved out a bit to match with the other things. So, select this, go to the top, press 1 and Z, and press F3 to see through it, and just align it with the ones that are currently there. just like that, and then select this, and align it as usual. Okay, next select this uh, piece here, and for now let's attach this, press 1, and just bring it in. There we go. We've got that one piece done, and this piece, so select these, go down to the countertop, so go to the left hand viewport here, F3, bring it right down to the countertop level, okay, and then there is another drawer right beneath it, so select that element, Detach, okay. Oops. And then select it again. Uh, effect pivot only, centered object, just to make it easier. And shift drag it down. Okay. Go in the front viewport and press.
minus one, and let's set these cabinets up. Let's put the first one right there, and the second one right there. Okay, and again, remember to make sure to save. And it's even better if you say with different uh, names. Makes things a little bit easier. So we have that. Now we can select, let's say, um, what do we need? What do we need? I guess we can select this one and shift drag it. Okay. Go in the front or the left viewport. No, no. Which one do we want? Okay, yeah, left viewport. Press one and align it. Okay. And align the other side. All right. Next, get the top here and just drag it up. here and select all these and then drag these vertices way back to about here. We're trying to make a little a little gap like this. Then go in the front view I guess, select all these and bring it down. Okay, there we go. We have the nice gap above the refrigerator. And let's... This probably has two doors, I would imagine, on it. <clears throat> so, drag this over. Okay, front, or left. And position it. Okay, press 1, and drag it up. Make a second door. You can align the pivot if you want to make it easier. And just create it right next to each other. Good enough. And let's just try to center it up. That's about good. And we'll just go in here and manually um, align the rest of them. Okay, so here we go, that's good. Now we can take this entire piece here, and the bottom one, and shift drag it over, because there's almost guaranteed to be a copy of it on the other side. Alright, there we go. Now those cabinets are done. Let's quickly add some handles. So let's just shift drag these over. Okay. And move that one up. And then this one is kind of floating over there. So select this, align. Um, everywhere but the Z. And then do the same with this one. Or sorry, the only the Y is what you want to use. And then select both these using control and then shift drag them over. Align them. And there we go. Um, so let's uh, make a couple vertical uh, things. So select here. Z to zoom into it. And then E. Rotate 90 degrees and just position it where you think it looks good. So, right about there doesn't look bad. Okay, so 
we're not getting somewhere. It looks looks rather rather decent. So um, that'll be it for this part. On uh, the next part, uh, I don't know what I'll do. I'll tell you when we get there.